Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to Cyphernetics. Well today we're talking about Star Trek Discovery. We're getting a bit closer now to uh, our air date, which is in April. We know that uh, they're premiering the uh, the new season at the convention in March, between, I guess, early and mid-March. So I'm guessing Paramount's not going to want to wait too long before uh, having it hit our, uh, our TV screens in April. So if I had to put a guess on it, I would say probably the first Thursday in April is uh, when I'd be predicting the new season is to air, because they're probably not going to want spoilers floating around from the convention airing and everything for too long so if that's happening mid-March then I reckon in early April is probably going to be our best bet. But today I wanted to talk first and foremost about one of the antagonist characters in this last season five of Discovery, the character of Lark who's played by Elias Tufexis. He's part of this uh, duo Bonnie and Clyde uh, villains for the season uh, and he's a massive Star Trek fan. And recently in an interview with a uh, friend to Siphonetics, Sean Ferrick from uh, Trek Culture, he did an interview with uh, Elias and had a bit of a chat about the upcoming season and he kind of let a few little things uh, slip in terms of links to past episodes and things like that which I thought was quite interesting. So I'm going to kind of maybe touch on a couple of these comments that he made in this interview and then talk about what this could mean for the, uh, for the show and the season. A video I previously did on Discovery which talked about potential callbacks to past Star Trek episodes. If you haven't seen that, click up here, you can check that out. Uh, talks about um, some Romulan technology and so forth which we saw in a past TNG episode. And a, a comment that uh, Elias did make kind of makes me think this might be a possibility or, uh, or if not this particular specific incident we're going to be getting some sort of callback to a past TNG episode. He said, one thing I really love, there are two really big callbacks to previous shows in terms of the storyline. So as a fan, I was like, oh, I love this. They were showing me the script and I was like, oh, you're bringing that back. So just as a fan, I was really excited about that. I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. I feel like this season is so much fun. So that's really quite positive that we're getting going to be getting some callbacks to past uh, Star Trek episodes. We, I talked about in that previous video and also certain things that were said by um, other actors and everything kind of also confirmed that. Now the other thing he said during the course of the interview um, was that uh, it was a little bit about his character. Um, and obviously we look at his makeup for his character and at a first glance it seems unfamiliar. Like this is a new race of Star Trek alien we haven't seen before. Then I got to thinking maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it is something we've seen before but it's a combination. One thing they've liked to do in Star Trek Discovery, in the case of, say, uh, President Rillick, is to combine past Star Trek races to create kind of a new look. President Rillick, I believe, is a third um, Bajoran, a third human, and a third Cardassian. Uh, so her makeup kind of reflects uh, human asp aspects, Bajoran, and also Cardassian aspects as well. So her makeup is quite different to anything we've seen before because it is meant to be a mix of multiple races. And I was thinking whether the makeup for Lark is kind of along these similar lines. Maybe he is a race as we've seen before, but he's a combination. Looking at his makeup, there are certain aspects when looking his his forehead that kind of almost seem a little bit Ferengi-like to me. Obviously he hasn't got the big earlobes and everything, but then it almost seems like he's got the, the, the spaces where the Ferengi ears could have been. It's sort of a little rounder around that area. And the makeup also kind of subtly resembles Idris Elba's makeup that he wore in the uh, Star Trek Beyond feature film as the character of Kral. Now, Kral wasn't any particular alien race. He was actually human, or Balthazar Edison was human, and he turned into Kral after using an alien energy transference device to extend his life. His appearance was sort of, I guess, meant to be an amalgam of all the different alien races that he'd absorbed to harvest their energy. So I wonder whether something like this could also play a part in the appearance of Lark. And his eyes are very striking, which look very similar to Rigelian eyes, with that sort of very, uh, very piercing uh, black and yellow appearance to them. So I wonder whether the character of Lark could potentially be a bit of a hybrid, a bit of a mix of other Star Trek races we've seen before. Maybe a bit of Ferengi, maybe a bit of Rigelian, maybe a bit of something else, maybe a bit of Kelpian or something, you know. He seems like he could be a bit of a melting pot of a couple of different Star Trek races we've seen before. And I wonder whether these links to his heritage could be you know, play into his backstory and everything for his character. Elias did say in his interview with Sean, what my character turns out to be is huge for Star Trek. It's like 
I can't. Uh, we'll talk after the season airs because we're going to want to talk specifics. So he kind of, you know, had a little bit of a hint there um, at his character being important to Star Trek, but didn't give us any specifics in terms of what that might be. Um, but yeah, I wonder whether there's kind of maybe some links to past Star Trek characters that we've, you know, known before. Um, maybe, uh, as I said, maybe there's, you know, he's got a little bit of uh, Ferengi DNA or something in him and maybe uh, he, he's a distant relative of Quark or something like that. Who knows? Um, but I think it, it, it's obviously the fact that he, he sort of makes a point of saying it's going to be huge for Star Trek and, you know, he doesn't want to give too much away kind of implies that, you know, if there wasn't any any past history there, then it wouldn't be huge for Star Trek. In order for it to be huge for Star Trek, it has to link to a previous character or event uh, that we've seen before. So there's going to be some sort of connection there, I feel. It seems Elias is a pretty big Star Trek fan, and from all uh, accounts, it, it kind of seems like this last season of the show uh, is going to be an exciting one. There's a lot of adventure and, and uh, action and adventure and excitement, I think, from what uh, what he was saying and other bits and pieces which we've sort of seen and read and everything seem to imply it's going to be a bit of a rollicking adventure of a season uh, to, to, to round out the show. So I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while since we've had live action Star Trek. Obviously, when Strange New Worlds finished halfway through last year, that was kind of the last time we had some live action Star Trek content. Obviously, after that, we got some lower decks and everything, but uh, but yeah, we're, we're going through a little bit of a, a dry patch at the moment on uh, on new Star Trek content on air. We've obviously you know, had some news and stuff during the week that uh, you know that Section Thirty One has started shooting, but we haven't really had anything solid to report on. You know, a little bit of casting information, but that's nothing nothing about characters. So I was going to hold off talking about Section Thirty One until we kind of know a little bit more about some characters in the show. Once we have some more information about characters, that will be something definitely I'm going to be talking about. Talking about the character of Lark, what do you guys think? Looking at his makeup, do you think he's a new alien race? Do you think he is a combination? of other Star Trek races we've seen in the past. Uh, let me know what your theory might be. If, if you had to say what Star Trek races does this guy most accurately resemble and you know what is his uh, genetic background, what would you say it is? G give, me a, give me your theories in the comment section and we'll get talking about that. Uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed to Siphonax yet, be sure to do so. Click on that big subscribe button to stay current and up to date with all the latest Star Trek news on YouTube. And be sure to check out my merch in the merch store. Plenty of cool t-shirts and hoodies and mugs, caps, you name it. All their uh, uh, really cool designs and uh, always discounted prices. I think there's a 15% off sale uh, at the moment or if not, remember, it's starting in the next couple of days. So be sure to uh, check that out very soon. And I'll be back really soon with my next video. I'll catch you guys soon.